I think with TikTok, it's very easy to get lost in, oh, I want I want to create this. I want to create this. But that's not how you build an audience. You build an audience through just showing people what they want to see. That's the only reason people are going to follow anybody is because they see themselves benefiting from the person that they're watching. Dare to capture himself. How are you doing, sir? I'm pretty good, man. How are you? I'm I'm doing well. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself, about your background, how you got into this, and um, what you're looking to do with your your venture here. The, this was never the dream at first. Originally, never thought of myself as being somebody that could even be on social media. I was always the the lurker and never the poster of anything. So when i mean i work with my brother all the time on certain things and our bit on other businesses and he's like hey you know what just start posting on tiktok see what happens be cool but i don't know how it's gonna turn out next thing you know i just fall in love with the platform i love everything that's been going on with it i see all these other people's lives changing i see i'm like oh man there, there's just so much now i know that you're you're mainly on tiktok do you do the same kind of um, consulting or coaching for other platforms too Right, right now it's just TikTok, and let me just perfect, try and perfect TikTok the best I can right now. I can branch off, get st certain stuff on YouTube that's still talking about TikTok, and even if I went on Instagram, it would probably be about talking about TikTok anyway. So, just because I believe that TikTok is the perfect opportunity for everyone to change whatever they need to change about their lives. What are some things that have surprised you along the way as you've as you've grown? I think one one big thing for me is I guess the the reaction I get from a lot of different kinds of people. Okay. Uh, I didn't think I would be able to appeal to as wide of a range of people that as I have. And at the same time, there's also those people that are like, oh, you only have this number of followers, so your knowledge can't be as high or can't compare to somebody that has over a hundred thousand followers right. and what i've learned is that we're basically saying the same exact thing it, the only difference is the number of followers they have compared to the number of followers i have right now no i i absolutely feel you on that my my niche also is trying to help people grow the streams or be better content creators and they're looking like dude you have like no followers or like this and that and i always feel the need to justify or validate why I'm qualified to give them give advice, you know, and hey, I've been in technology field for over 20 years. I've helped small and medium businesses grow. I know what the hell I'm doing. Yes, I can help you too, because I understand how this all works. Like we, we know exactly what we're talking about. Right. It, it's up to you if you want to listen and take that advice or not. We're just doing our part to help you out. One thing that I've noticed too, when people are, when I give people advice and, and I, I try to let them remind them of this is, I can give you advice, but it's really going to be up to you whether you're going to succeed or not. And it's not just following my advice that's going to make the difference. It's you understanding and applying the advice I give you to your own situation. Because what worked for me may not work for you based on your niche or your delivery style or your scheduling or whatever it is. So people have to be smart enough to realize that they have to adapt it. I can't guarantee that you're gonna have a million views with every, any video that you're doing. I can't guarantee that. I can only try and point you in the right direction of what to do. So it is a little frustrating when people come back and they're like, and they're basically trying to blame you for something that they're doing. When in the end, it's up to you to execute it in a way that's gonna be successful. So when you're creating your own TikToks, what is your philosophy? What is your process? My first thought is, does my audience want to see this? Is this something that they're wanting to pay attention to? Is this something that they are actually going to pay attention to? Because I think with TikTok, it's very easy to get lost in, oh, I want, I want to create this. I want to create this. 
but that's not how you build an audience. You build an audience through just showing people what they want to see. That's the only reason people are going to follow anybody is because they see themselves benefiting from the person that they're watching. When you're trying to figure that out, I'm sure that you must rely fairly heavily on, on analytics. That is, that is one big thing that I always pay attention to. Obviously with TikTok, watch time is always going to be king. People, the longer people watch your videos, the more TikTok the algorithm is going to push out everything that you put out there. And mm -hmm. then that can tell me where people are starting to fall off. If I have a 30 second video and people are only watching the first 15 seconds. All right. What am I doing after that? That's causing people to be like, all right, I'm I'm, bo I'm bored of this already. So, mm. yeah, again, it's it's basically studying those analytics, studying exactly what's working with the videos at that time to understand ah, this is exactly what my audience is going to respond to. You've had a number of videos where you're talking about, you know, you have to have that hook. Yeah. Yeah, and if you want to talk about that a little bit, like why, what is a hook and why is it so important that people have? So a hook is essentially what's going to grab your audience in, that, in those first three seconds because TikTok's the type of platform where people just get that instantaneous, instantaneous in entertainment, essentially. So you want to try and grab their attention as fast as you possibly can, mm -hmm. because if you're not doing that, they're, they're going to scroll past video and that's only going to make everything suffer. If somebody had a, had a had a small business doing something. What would you tell them, you know, on day one, if this was day one of them starting their TikTok account? What what should they do to 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 get the best following possible? The the best advice that I could ever give somebody that is just starting on TikTok, mm. just start posting videos. That's the only way you're really going to learn how to do anything is to just start doing it. One thing you just said was, you know, about, about the quality. I've heard other people say that, you know, the quality doesn't matter. Is there a reason why, you know, folks like yourself say, don't worry about the quality as much? So the reason I say not to worry about the quality as much is because I think the more you post, the quality is going to catch up to it eventually. Hmm. So there's a... I, I, I was a perfectionist very much so when I first started TikTok, especially with being with my camera all the time. I wanted to make sure the video looked as good as possible. But because of that, I didn't get out as much content as I probably should have. So in the end, that probably slowed down my growth. Whereas if I just didn't worry about the quality, I know the quality is going to catch up to the quantity that I'm pushing out at this point. So... That is why I always tell people, don't worry about the quality as much now. Obviously, you don't want your videos to look like it came from a potato or something like that. <laughs> but it, it, as long as you're putting something out that looks decent, you're going to be OK because the quality will catch up. What about quantity? You know, I've heard people say, oh, you should post at least once a day to people saying, oh, you should post 15 times a day. Like, what, what do you okay. think? is like a, a good number and does it change based on what kind of content you're putting out there? I think a good philosophy, philosophy that I've learned over time on TikTok is just post as much as you can because I know people that have posted 10 plus times a day and there's a point where they just like, I can't do this anymore, it's too much. And for the people that are only posting once or twice a day that can actually post more, they're hurting themselves. So. With TikTok, I wouldn't say there is an exact number that truly needs to be, this is the exact number you need to grow a massive following. Yeah. But I believe that you should post as much quality as you can for your audience. Like that, that's, a, that's the big thing. Don't just post just a post. A lot of people think that just because they're posting, oh, I should be growing. Like, no, you always have to keep that audience in mind. If you are somebody that has a problem posting every day, even though you know you should. Are there any tips or tricks for being able to get content out regularly? One thing that I tend to do, but not as often as I probably should, is batch record. So by that, I mean, I, I, I have all these ideas. I know exactly the content that I want to put out for the next few days coming. So what I'll do, I'll make sure I record all the videos that I need to record. I can edit them however I want later, but I get the recordings done. And then throughout the week, throughout whatever days, I, at least I have this as my backup, essentially. 
if somebody started off and they were doing all right, they're getting some followers, getting some likes, and, and you know, they're seeing a nice steady growth. And all of a sudden, it starts to like be stagnant or they notice their viewership is decreasing, watch time is decreasing. What kind of tips do you have for people to kind of get over that that hump? One thing I would say is uh, probably just, you, you might need to change things up a little bit. Just maybe your delivery, maybe it's your messaging. If you say you're not even saying anything, but you need, there's something that obviously needs to change at least a little bit. And every change that most people need to do on TikTok is always a small one. It's never one where you have to completely change everything, but it's always it's always a tiny thing that you just need to adjust a little bit because maybe maybe your audience might be getting a little bored with this certain type of content. And the good thing about TikTok is you can always come back and experiment a little more with different types of videos. So if you just experiment a little more, change certain things that you think may need to be changed for your audience and then yeah. there you go you should start to see more results and get more answers about what's happening with your page are there like ratios you should be looking at like if i have ten thousand followers i should expect i should expect this amount of views or this amount of likes or comments or whatever like is there numbers like that something i've heard multiple people say like multiple big people on tiktok say is like a ten uh a 10 to 1 ratio so you have a 10,000 followers you could probably expect 1,000 views at least but again with TikTok it's a little difficult because those views are going to happen over a certain period of time yeah they're, they're not going to happen immediately so it, it it does come down to a little bit of patience uh, you have to wait weeks and weeks to be like all right this is the true View, like value of this video right here and i've also heard that a video the duration that is basically cycling through all these fyps is 90 days so if you hear it should be a 10 to 1 ratio i guess after 90 days then that determines the true value of it but again huh. it, tiktok is difficult at times and nobody wants to wait 90 days to see all right, this is the perfect performance for a video. I think everyone definitely needs to be more patient. I, with TikTok, it's hard because there's so much. It's, it's an instant feedback loop that you get with the app. Like you post a video immediately, you're getting responses from it to some degree. The only time I have deleted them if I post them, I'm like, it's too cringy. I'm like, I can't bear to have this out there any more than it is. So <laughs> I just, I'm just going to delete this thing or mark it private. Um, that's, that's something I did a couple weeks ago. I went all the way back to my first couple videos and I was like, oh, <laughs> dude. Like, I feel like I'm a completely different person than what I was compared to those first videos. Yeah, I, I was on, uh, I went in um, 06 Chris. He's a, he's a TikToker and, and Twitch streamer. I went into his channel the other day and he, he shouted me out. And when he does his shout outs, it pulls clips from my Twitch page. And I saw, I was like, oh no, 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 no. And I like immediately went and like, was like emptying out the clips. I was like, no, no, that has to go away. So, um, <laughs> I was, yeah, that was, I was like, I forgot I had these old crappy clips in there. Um, and, and even oh, he's like, he's like, he, people will always find you. And even he was like, oh, this is interesting. I was like, yeah, oh God, please shoot me. What are what are some of the more common misconceptions that you've heard from from people out there? So I I still think a lot of people just believe that TikTok is a dancing teenager app, when a majority of people now on TikTok are over the age of twenty five at least. Yeah. So it's not just teenagers dancing, and there's so many like I I, I truly believe TikTok is the perfect platform for anybody that is trying to build a personal brand, a small business, anything. So that that's probably still the biggest misconception I think I've heard yeah. plenty of times. Or there's a lot of people who are like, oh, I'm too old for this. I'm too old to be on TikTok. I shouldn't be here. When you see a bunch of a bunch of grandpas and grandmas just out here getting millions of followers for doing stuff that anybody can do so you're talking about the the changes in the algorithm and i've seen videos where it's like hey the algorithm has changed and do this now instead of that um how do you how do you learn about the algorithm is just like hey i was doing this thing and it's not working anymore like or because i don't think i don't see tiktok saying hey guys we just changed something in the algorithm like 
How do you learn about it? I think if TikTok did that, we, nobody would be happy if they, there'd be an update every other day or something like that. But <laughs> yeah. uh, again, it, it just comes through a lot of observation. Okay. Lots of observation. And then there's a few other creators out there that are really just pointed out where you're like, ah, okay. So what I did kind of notice, it actually is happening. It just comes through a lot of observation where you're like, okay, this, this is something that was obvious before but now it doesn't seem nearly as obvious mm -hmm. and i think whenever something like that happens that's when my brain switches to okay something's changing right now keep an eye out for other things that could possibly be happening i noticed you you're starting to call out trends a little bit more than i noticed you doing you know a month or two ago Is there how do you find how do you figure out what the trends are like where do you where do you go to see trends and uh, what is changing so for me the way i find trends is just Simply through scrolling my FYP. Uh, initially, if I if I'm scrolling and I hear a sound and somebody doing something very specific with a sound, it's not just like a random video with the sound as the background. It, they're they're clearly doing something very specific to the sound. Then all right, I make note of that sound and then eventually I keep scrolling. And I see the same sound again. Mm. That's when I'm like, okay. There might, be, there might be something to this one. So I look at the sound and I see how many videos are currently on it. And for me, if it's, if it's a low number, I'd say at least under 10,000. Again, it's just something where you have to recognize patterns. Yeah. And I think with my mentality going into TikTok now, I'm always on the lookout for stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I'm probably going to be able to see it better than somebody that's just casually scrolling. Right. Can you can you go through the, the the theory about using hashtags and like how you find them and what to use and, and all that? I th I, th I think they are a crucial part to every TikTok video, and I say that because TikTok is going to categorize your content based on the hashtags that you're using. Now it does have the AI that can probably determine what your video is about without any hashtags, but those hashtags help tell the algorithm this is the type of content that you're making yeah. and when it does that it's gonna t it's gonna push that content to the people that are liking similar content already because you that's, that's something that you always want you always want the right people to see your content and that's only going to help your content perform better now when it comes to finding hashtags one thing that i always do i go to the discover page and i just type in a keyword that i want to use on in the search bar so something that I did a while ago when I first started taking the hashtags more serious was I just typed in TikTok growth tips. All I typed in, then I went to hashtags and there's always going to be a massive list of hashtags that relate directly to the keywords that you typed in. Hmm. And then the good thing about that page is that all the way to the far right of the screen, you'll see how many views each of those hashtags has. Mm -hmm. Now, another thing that I like to preach to people is that you don't want to use the hashtags that have billions and billions of views already. Mm -hmm. And that's just simply because they're, they're oversaturated and it's going to be harder to stand out within those hashtags. Now, I always say try to find the hashtags that are a little under a million. And if you can do that, great. Uh, I know with certain niches, it's pretty hard to do that sometimes. But when you have those lower viewed hashtags, that means there's not as much competition right. in those hashtags. So say you have a video that does blow up with that hashtag. And when people search that hashtag directly, your video is going to appear much higher up on that search ranking. And they're more likely to watch that video because it appears it's one of the first few videos that they see why don't you walk people through what it is you do when you're reviewing someone's profile and their videos just so they can get an idea of what to expect if they were to sign up for your service with these profile reviews i literally try to look at every single piece of your page that is gonna help you gain as many followers as you possibly can so I go from, I always have a, a list. I always go in the same exact order. I always start with the person's bio because that is the first thing that most people are going to see when they swipe to your page. I always start with the bio and I try to help you optimize it the best way that you can. Then the next thing I look at is the top of the page, which is probably one of the, mo the most underutilized 
aspects of TikTok. And at the very top of every TikTok profile, it's usually the person's name. But that's another section where if you add in a keyword, that's like a, a sneaky way to bring more followers to your page. And then from there, I go from the top of the page to the hashtags. Then I look at your captions. Are you utilizing the right captions? Are you utilizing captions at all to help people stick around for your videos? Then I look at small things like closed captions. Are you using closed captions for your videos? Because closed captions is just a little tiny thing. It may not seem extremely important, but when you have a, a, an abundance of people of, from different backgrounds, you don't know if they're listening to TikTok with volume. You don't know if they have any hearing impairments. So having those closed captions, that's just an easy way to make your content as inclusive as possible. And everyone that comes across your video can see your video and understand what's being said. Then I look at your comment section. I think the comment section is just a very easy way to gain followers, to build true fans. Mm. So how are you interacting with the people that take the time to interact with you or try to interact with you? And then from there, I take a deeper dive into your content and try to help you make better content, explain certain things that I think are working, certain things that I think need to add, certain things that may not be working and stuff like that. What, what he does when he does a review is he actually records a video of him reviewing your page with a, a screenshot of uh, embedded of, of him scrolling through your page and going through all this stuff. And he sends you a video. So it's like a, yeah, it's it literally been, yeah. a personal one-on-one -on -one review of your video. So um, it definitely, it definitely helped me. And, and one of the biggest, well, there were a lot of things you suggested that, that made a ton of sense. But one of the big ones was what you mentioned at the top of the page with your name. I didn't realize until you said that, that you can change that. Everything on TikTok is searchable. Everything is searchable. So that's why you want to utilize it the best way that you can to, you don't want to miss any, any tiny details. What are some of the biggest mistakes that you, you see commonly people doing? Yeah, a lot of mistakes. And I think that with these mistakes, they're not huge mistakes. They're just little tiny things, like little things like the bio. If you optimize your bio and let, explain to people, this is why you should follow me. This is how I'm going to help you. This is how you're going to benefit from following me. Little things like that. Again, the top of the page, that's something that a lot of people don't use. And I think that's a big mistake that people make. When it comes to the videos, I think people underestimate the value of good lighting in a lot of their videos and good quality sound. If if nobody can understand what you're saying, what's the point of them watching? If people struggle to see you, then what's the point of them watching it? So I think those are two those are two other big things that I see a lot of. Um, and another small thing is when they add text on the screen. Mm. When you can't read all the text when it's maybe too far in one direction or the other or like maybe their caption covers up some of it the display on the right side of the screen covers up some of the words <clears throat> that's that's one of my biggest pet pet peeves that i see a lot of people doing and it just makes me want to reach through the screen and just <laughs> strangle them real quick and like stop doing this pay attention to where you're putting the text so yeah the, those, those are a few of the like just the biggest ones that really stand out to me that I notice right away. The experience on the web app versus the phone app. Oh my God. Oh, it is, it's, it is so it's frustrating. It's completely different. Like, oh. like, like I, I occasionally shoot, um, like the podcast, right? I, I, I go through DaVinci Resolve to do my editing for this, right? It's not just something I shoot with my phone. I can't, right? Yeah. I want to just push it from my computer to TikTok. And sure, I can do that, but it doesn't go into draft. It, it just goes live. You can't put any effects oh. on it. You can't put any sounds on it. You can't do anything to it. So then I'm like, well, God damn it. So now I have to like save it to Google Drive, go on my phone, pull it down from Google Drive, upload it to TikTok. And then it's like, by then you've actually, now it's got compressed a couple times and like the quality is not what it was before. And then, or like on the web app, you can schedule it. Why can't I schedule it in my damn phone? You know what I mean? Well, like, why, why is that a feature that wouldn't be on the mobile version of it? Right, right. 
They have all of the good editing features are on your phone, but you can't schedule them. It's like, why, why? It's like, are you trying to drive me to the phone? Are you trying to drive me to the app, like the web app? Like, I don't understand what they're doing, but like TikTok's like, no, you don't care. No. <laughs> what are the most important stats or, or data points do you think people should focus on as, as they're looking at each video? The most important ones I would say are watch time. Hmm. But I think after watch time, it definitely comes down to shares and comments. That's sh that's showing TikTok people are actually engaging with this content. People want to save this for later. People want to show other people this video. So those are the big things. Like, yeah, views are always awesome to see, but they don't tell the whole story. And likes don't always tell the whole story either. So having those extra extra engagement stats that that's what's really gonna determine all right is this a good video is this something that people want to comment on is this something that people want to show other people and if you are on tiktok and you're trying to grow you're trying to do anything on tiktok take his advice he puts out content constantly he also does this professionally so in his in his bio on his profile page you can see links to have him actually review your page which he did for me and it was great I know it's the start of the year, but big things are coming and I'm excited for it. So yeah, be sure to follow me. If you have any problems with TikTok, shoot me a question. I'll always be happy to answer. I always get back to everyone that I possibly can. So there we go. So I've dropped his link uh, throughout the throughout this uh, interview. And so go check him a Dare to Capture on TikTok. I appreciate you stopping by, sir. Yeah, it, it, it's been a pleasure, man. I had a great time.